As with most industries, bartending has a whole host of jargon and assumed knowledge, which can be a little bit daunting when you're starting out in the industry or attempting some drinks making at home. It took me about a month of working in Australia to figure out that when I was being asked to restock the splits, they were talking about the small cans of mixers in the bar. We'd never called them that in Scotland, so I would just wander around and restock everything that looked remotely low in the hope that one of these things would be the elusive splits. So let's have a look at some of the equipment that I talk about in my other videos so that you can navigate your way with minimal confusion. This is probably the most important piece of equipment in a bartender's arsenal. It may look cool and very Tom Cruise of you to free pour, but not very many people are willing to put in the hours of practice that it takes to actually be good at it. So a jigger will make sure that you are turning out consistently well-balanced drinks. There are different kinds and sizes depending on what style of bartending you're doing. If you only have one, then a classic double jigger will do the job. So one end of this is a standard shot, which is 30 mils, one ounce or 25 mils, depending what country you're in. And the other one is a double shot, plus there are markings inside for 15 mils, uh, 20 mils or half an ounce, three quarter of an ounce, so on. If you're going to be pumping out a high volume of cocktails, consider a graduated measure. It's a larger measure with steps of 15 mil or half ounce increments. So you can build a whole cocktail in there and then just tip it into the shaker and you're good to go. You do have to be careful though, because obviously if you're not paying attention, you can over pour quite easily and it's not gonna spill out. So you could end up giving someone a very strong drink. There are two main types of shaker, which are Boston and Cobbler. Most bars now use what is known as tin on tin Boston shakers, which is pretty self-explanatory. These guys are relatively inexpensive, easy to clean, big enough to build two cocktails, hard to break, and if you buy all of the same brand, you can mix and match the larger and smaller halves so you don't have to worry about losing pieces because you would be surprised at how easily things disappear in a bar. Your other option for a Boston shaker is where half of it is glass. Obviously with that one, you can see what's being built in there, but they are much heavier and you can break them. So most bars have switched to tin on tin these days. Another option is the cobbler. This one is by far the most aesthetically pleasing. Look how cute it is. And it does have a built-in strainer. Um, but it's really better for home use rather than high volume bartending as it is much smaller and harder to clean. You can get as fancy as you like with this and there's some really beautiful cut glass and crystal ones out there, but it's also probably the least necessary piece of bar equipment, especially for a home bar, as you literally just need a container to stir your booze on ice. Or as a personal preference, I honestly think that homemade martinis taste better when mixed in a coffee plunger. There are three types of cocktail strainer commonly found in any bar. You have the julep strainer. This is the oldest and simplest way of holding the ice back as you pour your drink into the glass. This one has been around basically since ice started being used in cocktails, um, but you had to have different sizes to fit in different tins and glasses. So there was a bit of a gap in the market for a more ergonomic strainer, and so along came the Hawthorne strainer, which beat the pack to become the ubiquitous cocktail strainer thanks to the coil, which fits into any shaker and can be really easily cleaned, and the little hooks which balance it on top of your shaker. It takes its name from the Hawthorne Cafe, which is a bar in Boston. The julep has had a revival alongside many classic cocktails from that golden age of bartending and is now often seen used with mixing glasses. Like so. Whereas Hawthorne strainers are more often used with your shaking tins. And finally, we have the fine strainer, which really does what it says on the tin. So it collects all of the smaller shards of ice left behind by the other strainer. It's usually not necessary for stirred drinks as you should be moving the ice gently enough that it doesn't break into small enough pieces to pass through your julep or your hawthorn, but it is used for shaken drinks. Although personal preference can mean that you quite like a few ice chips in your daiquiri, for instance. This multitasker is both a mixing and a measuring utensil, so pretty darn useful. Again, you can get as fancy as you like with really long and ornate ones, but basic ones like this are really cheap and easily found in hospitality shops. 
There is a bit of a knack to twirling it around the outside of the glass rather than churning it through the ice when you're stirring that. So mastering it will help control the dilution and keep a silky smooth texture for your stirred down drinks. Plus you look like a boss. So it's definitely worth practicing. The spoon part usually measures five mils or a sixth of an ounce. So it's really useful for those more finicky cocktail specs which by the way is what bartenders call cocktail recipes, short for specifications. So this one really is a matter of personal preference. I much prefer a serrated edge for cutting twists. In fact, you can see if you can find the video where I forgot to bring mine and had to struggle through with a flat blade. Thank goodness for editing. And on the bar, um, I'll actually quite often use a vegetable peeler for a more rustic twist. Just make sure that whatever you're using, it's really sharp because you're obviously way more likely to hurt yourself with a blunt tool and follow the same rules as for cooking and keep your fingertips out of the way. Hopefully this helps you find your way in the rest of my episodes. Let me know in the comments if there's any other bar jargon you would like me to explain or if there's a piece of equipment that you can't live without. So now you know.